Hi everyone, Gridlock Cosplay here. Over the past couple of weeks, I have been printing parts for my little model Strandbeast. And you can see my printer in the background there. It is actually not active anymore because I finished printing everything that I need to do the first phase of assembly. So that is all of the legs and the chassis and everything put together up into the point where uh, we're gonna add another gear for the, onto the crankshaft to add a motor onto it. And there are a lot of possibilities for adding motors. So that's gonna be a little bit more adaptable later on. So this video, I'm gonna show you how to assemble all those pieces to get started. going to give you a bit of advice for when you're printing out all of your parts you're going to want to start assembling them as you get them but this is one side of the knee this is the other side and they snap together now this uh, the, the thicker side goes on to the chassis so if you put these together before you have the chassis printed and not on the chassis you're gonna have a hard time getting them apart and this one right here is the most fragile piece in the entire uh, ent entire set, and that will just snap off. So you may want to just print an extra one anyway. In the package of STL files that I've provided, there are two versions of the chassis. This is the two leg pair per side. There is a three leg pair per side. I obviously am putting together the two leg pair. These are all the pieces that you need for a single leg. So for the two pair version, you need eight. And for these three pair version, you need 12. All right, the way I have the pieces arranged here is in such a way that this leg is on that side of the chassis. Uh, just so that you know, I call this the hip and this is the foot. And this is the hip joint here. That's the part that goes through the chassis. You can tell because it is bigger than the other joints, okay? Uh, we don't need these pieces to begin with. It is very important that you uh, keep these in the same orientation as they were when they were printed. Reason being is that if I can flip one of these around, you can see that there is a little bit of a size difference, and that is significant in the mechanics of how the Stun Beast walks. So make sure you have them oriented the right way. So now we'll just go through it step by step. I would highly suggest that you put together the leg in the same orientation each way, except maybe for alternating the, the way that you put the plugs through just for aesthetic purposes. But part of the reason is because this is like only a half thickness uh, compared to the actual joint. And that does need to be on the opposite side compared to this piece. So this one, I have it where the, the thicker side is pointing down. Here, I have it pointing up. All you need to do is put the joint in, take the plug, and snap it in. Now it does snap in, and it should move very freely, like so. The reason why it snaps in is because there is a little bit of a thicker uh, spot on, on there, so it uh, has high friction. This piece actually doesn't matter which way you put it, because it's symmetrical. Satisfying snap. There it is. So all these pieces are nice and loose. This is where it starts to get a little bit tricky. What you have to do is hold this in place, like with the, the joint in there, while you put the rest of it together. Okay. So this is uh, this is the part of the knee. I'm going to start by putting it through here. I don't know if you can see that very well. And I'm going to pull it off, pull it back just a little bit, because I do have to get the first part of the foot in. Then this connector, slide it the rest of the way in, and so that they're all slid in together. There we go. So that's how it should look there. And everything should still move very freely. 
Now we take the other half of the knee and typically, here's a little bit of advice here, is my, uh, when I print it, it tends to go a little bit thick. I have my, uh, uh, my, my Z setting a little bit low so it squashes a little more. So it's usually a little bit thicker. You might want to ream out the, uh, uh, the centers there to be able to get it to fit better. But, there we go. You just gotta take it on here. I used I usually take a knife to it to uh, to just make sure that everything goes through. There we go. Snaps together. You should hear that, and it should all be very very loose still. That's the idea. Is it's low friction. Okay. So now we've got this one leg attached to the chassis. These little hand grippy guys here are both attaching onto the crankshaft. Now that is part of the reason why this is on, well here, for this for orientation here, this one's on the left side and this one is on the right. It's so that they can come together and take up the equivalent of, of one space. Okay? So what you need to do is, uh, I guess you could put the crankshaft on here, but I'm going to put all of the other legs on first and uh, then show you how to attach it to the crankshaft. As I was putting it together, I realized there was one thing that I forgot to mention. On the three pair version, you're going to have to put in the middle one and uh, it looks like there's not enough room to do it. So here's how, here's how you'll need to do it. Uh, you're going to have to, uh, to put the knee in from the side of the, of the leg that you have not done yet. So make sure that you do not do this one last, otherwise it will be impossible. So the way it works is, is um, on your leg, this piece is going to go in right here. But what you do is you put it in, you put it in partly so that you can slide it in and then continue to push it in like so. That's the secret on how to get the middle leg on when you are using the three pair. Now that it is starting to look particularly creepy, we're going to make it worse. This is the crankshaft. Obviously with the three paired one, there are three of them. Also they, instead of at 180 degrees from each other, they are 120 degrees off so that each of the legs are out of sync from each other. The square side goes to the inside of the chassis because that's where the gear will attach on eventually. Okay, so here's how to do this. From, uh, from here you can see that it is on relative to here, it's on the left side. So I'm going to very carefully snap this on, ah, like that. Take the other one up through the leg hole and onto the crankshaft as well. I've broken a lot of these before, so okay, be very, very careful with those. So the idea there is that uh, because one is on one side, one's on the other, they, they uh, don't have to bend or anything in order to get on. Now, the other side as well, uh, just do them right beside. And where does this go? This goes on the inside. There we go. Okay, so we have one leg pair fastened to the crankshaft. I'm just turning the crankshaft and you can see that it is doing that walking mechanism. Okay, now do the other one. I would recommend printing an extra set or two of these because they do break very easily. It just so happens I didn't, but anyway. So I'm holding the crankshaft down because it's not time to attach it yet. But you can see as I turn it, it is doing the two-legged walking. 
The crankshaft is fastened to the chassis by these U-shaped fasteners. Now I have to stop here for a minute because I am building an adapter that is a gearbox so that I can use a high speed motor on this instead of something slower like uh, an already geared down motor or uh, a stepper. So what I have to do for that is I have to put on the gear, put the gearbox in and then slide the crankshaft down and fasten it. So. For the sake of this video though, we're just going to continue on. So to continue putting the crankshaft on, here's an important uh, order is that you have to put the gear on first because once the crankshaft is down, you cannot get it onto there. Just put it about in the middle. You can uh, put the crankshaft down to make sure that it is where you want it to be. And depending on what motor you're using, uh, that might be in different places. So there we go, the gear. Uh, what you might want to do in this case is put a little bit of super glue onto there or some other way of, uh, of making sure that it does not move on the axle. Next, you'll notice that the of the connectors, there are, for each side, there is one thicker one and two smaller ones. The thicker one goes into the middle and it should just snap right into place. There it is. And make sure that you do get it centered, otherwise the crankshaft will catch on it. This one's a bit tricky with the gear on there. You need a pair of pliers to put it on. And with that, half of your Strandbeast is now assembled. You'll probably want to play around with it, of course. See how it walks in all of its creepiness. But you will notice that it does stand on its own, or it can at least. Let's see. That's pretty good for half of an animal. when you have both sides assembled now it's time to put them together and that's what these are for those really snap in tightly there and it's best to only do it once like never uh, Never require yourself to have to take it apart again because uh, then the, uh, the friction won't be as good and you'll have to probably glue them in. So Now, play around with it a whole bunch before you put the motors on, of course, because uh, by, by working it a little bit, you'll find out where uh, you might have some kinks, uh, like where you might have a loose part here or there. And uh, yeah, so fool around with it a bit, and then uh, and then uh, yeah, go and and uh, start putting the motors on. Okay, so that is the Sun Beast fully assembled, just up until before the point where we're adding the motors, of course, which is going to be uh, you know different possibilities. So. For those of you who haven't actually started this yet, just uh, rest assured that there are instructions in the, uh, in the package that I've created with all the STL files. It shows how many of each you need to print, as well as print settings like the, uh, the infill and the support settings. So when you do complete your own version of this, I want to see it. I want to see like, photos, you can uh, send them to me on Facebook or leave a comment on this video with a link to your video of your Strong Beast. And I want to see how you put your motors in, any extras that you put in as well. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you found this video instructive and I'll see you guys later.